Welcome back. President Trump is starting 2018 by putting Pakistan on notice, calling them out for their, quote, lies and deceit while accepting tens of billions of U.S. dollars. Yeah, he's also calling for change in Iran, where he's offering his support to a number of protesters there who are fighting for basic human rights. Two big issues happening now. Here to discuss is national security analyst Ryan Morrow. We're going to start with Pakistan, Ryan. And uh, we have sent billions and billions of dollars to a country that, frankly, a lot of Americans think hates us and a country that may have been harboring uh, pot possibly America's worst enemy, Osama bin Laden, for a number of years until we found him there in 2011. Uh, tell us about this decision to withhold all this money. Well, bottom line, we should not tolerate the killing and maiming of American soldiers, which is what Pakistan does through their intelligence service and through terrorist groups that are supposedly independent, but actually operate as the proxies of the Pakistani intelligence service. Uh, so we should have no tolerance, and this is great that we're cutting off the funding and basically saying, look, you want money? It's going to come on a case-by-case -case basis. If you do something where you need the money and you earn it, maybe we'll give it to you. And that's a great policy to have. All these terrorist groups, by the way, overlap. And so uh, we have to look not just at Al Qaeda and the Taliban, but these other groups that are backed by Pakistan that allow the Taliban, Al Qaeda and these to operate. I mean, you look at the numbers, and I know you just talked about 33 billion over the last couple of years, but 526 million U.S. aid went to Pakistan in 2017. That's an estimated number, but regardless, that is a lot of money. President Trump has said we've been foolish to do this. Do you agree? Yes, and part of the reason that Pakistan has gotten away with this, aside from the perceived dependency that we have upon them, which I think is a joke, is because Pakistan has run a bipartisan political influence operation in the United States to influence politicians to basically advocate on their behalf. Mm -hmm. And they've at the same time been building jihadist networks in the United States. They're not an ally. Okay. Well, let's switch over to Iran now, which is another tweet that went out and another situation we're watching develop as, a, as a, people start to protest there yet again. A once great nation that was once a great friend to the United States until the late 70s when a Muslim revolution took over and the country has since been run uh, by a regime like this. What should the president do in this situation? How does he help to free these people uh, from this situation? I've been saying literally since I was 16 years old and I entered this field of national security that the Iranian people are our best weapon in the war against radical Islam. I believe that what you are seeing right now is the D-Day landing of the war on radical Islam being fought by the Iranian people. And we have a serious chance to kill the Iranian regime and its Islamic revolution that they believe has to essentially conquer the world. And the way that we do that is we just use the Reagan strategy from the Cold War, support the Iranian people like we supported the anti-communist forces. There are a million and one ideas on how to do that easily and cheaply including having Trump weaponize his Twitter so that there's a constant stream of news coming out of Iran. I would say cyber attack this regime security forces communications. They attack us with cyber warfare. We can do it back. And I think it's time for some, some of those accidental explosions that used to happen in Iran under the Obama administration to return. There has been, uh, Fox News has exclusively obtained a report showing the panic that they are dealing with, and it says religious leaders and the leadership must come to the scene as soon as possible and prevent the situation from deteriorating further. God help us, this is a very complex situation and is different from previous occasions. Do you think the way President Trump is handling this can be a defining moment in his presidency? It is. If the Iranian regime survives this, it will be the fault of the current administration because they have everything that they need in order to topple the, the regime. And I, I blame both parties on this for the fact that the regime even exists at all. And if this happens, if the regime falls, the Iranian people will have saved the United States a lot of casualties because Iran kills our soldiers. They help support attacks like 9-11 by supporting Al-Qaeda. And they could even save us from a horrific nuclear EMP scenario. Uh, and if the regime falls, it impacts every threat across the globe that we face, from North Korea to Latin American drug cartels to Venezuela to Syria, you name it. So th this, it doesn't get any bigger than this. So Trump's doing a good job so far. 
but there's more that can be done. That's right. And Rex Tillerson just got even busier mm -hmm. as all of these, these developments have uh, happened here over the last couple of days. Ryan, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Great perspective. We do appreciate it. All right. Thank you.